Meanwhile, though, the Junkers 52, the Ju-52 was a product of uh, Germany that was not allowed to make anything that could be used in wartime, right? After the First World War, they were restricted from making anything that could be used. So they made airliners, they made gliders, and they made uh, biplanes, fully acrobatic biplanes, like our Folk Wolf, the silver one there, and the white Bucher behind it. And this airplane, the, the Ju-52, was actually made as a, one of the first airliners used by Lufthansa. Well, it just turned out, though, when the wars kicked off, they could be quickly converted into transports, parachute assault airplanes, and all kinds of special uh, operations type aircraft. That's what this one was used for. It uh, did all the parachute assaults down in the Mediterranean and North Africa, and uh, became very famous during the war because they were resupplying all their troops at Stalingrad with these things. They lost almost 300 of these alone just trying to resupply the German uh, Sixth Army. Um, the airplane itself was way ahead of its time, very similar to the Ford Trimotor. Same kind of skin, you'll see that corrugated aluminum uh, look to it, which obviously has huge aerodynamic penalties, but when you're only doing 80, 85 miles an hour, who cares, right? The idea of it was really strong. So the stronger the skin is, the less structure you need it and the more stuff you can carry. And that's why these, for a you know, rather slow, underpowered airplane, could carry a lot of stuff. Hitler had one of these, used it to get all around Europe, and uh, again, it was an interesting airplane for its day. We love flying this one. This is actually a post-war Casa-built uh, Junkers. Uh, the Germans got plans from, uh, as a reward for not entering the war, they got uh, license copies, uh, licenses to build copies of the J-52, the 109, and the HE-111, so they built a lot of those for the Spanish Air Force after the war. This is one of them. This is the only one flying in North America. And when we fly it in our air show in May, uh, once in a while we get permission to have six paratroopers jump out during the air show. It's a lot of fun to watch. And there's rumors that there's a few parachutes over here in the woods that, from some of the jumps that didn't go quite right. But the guys were okay. Anyway, it's a joy to fly, and it's the only one flying around here. Pretty amazing. <laughs> Behind you is an ME-108, another famous airplane from the Germans, about mid-30s, 1934. Uh, Willy Messerschmitt designed this airplane very far ahead of its time. It was a four-place uh, liaison aircraft, and it was used throughout the war as a transport and uh, other special mission kind of airplane. Um, but it became really famous in 1935 when the German War Ministry came to Messerschmitt and said, hey, we need a frontline fighter for what we're getting into. And Willy took this design, put a V-12 on the front, Put a single place cockpit in the middle and he had the ME-109, which or the V-1, which was the first prototype. And that airplane was so far ahead of its time and so advanced that they actually wound up naming the whole company after him a couple years later in 1938. And he, they went on to make uh, almost 35,000 109s with their frontline fighter and awfully good. It, 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 it kind of uh, uh, inherited all those strengths of this great airplane, but it also inherited one of the weaknesses. You can see the landing gear is actually connected to the fuselage. And in a two-place airplane, two-place wide, that's okay. When you go to a single-place airplane, it puts the landing gear really close together. And the 109 was known as a brake fighter, but uh, just a bear to get off the ground and to land again. They lost almost 10,000 of them just trying to take off and land because the landing gear just works against you in every conceivable way. And that line winds up biting us here because we have our 109G in the main museum and it took us three years to get our chief pilot checked out in them because there's only a couple guys in the world who can fly 109 and there were no two-place versions so you basically have to read the books and hope for the best because takeoff is always a monster and so far we've been very very lucky and we've been flying ours for a couple years now but again it's a hangover from this now one of the they knew this was a problem so they actually did a, what was called an ME 208 which is a tricycle landing gear version of this and I'll show you that over on this side we have one of those too unbelievably Anyway, behind us is another kind of going the